Yes, in the immediate aftermath of the U.S. terror alert in Abuja, that uh, was followed up by swift uh, evacuation uh, by not only the U.S., but its allies, including the U.K., Canada, Australia, and the rest of the uh, you know, Western powers. The, those who should have known how things came to where they are with us in Nigeria, were thrown into some kind of pandemonium and they began to speak in all kinds of ways. And therefore, in the first week of November, on Arise TV, we saw IBM Haruna, general if you like, and uh, if you insist on calling him General Haruna, I would then say Quota General Haruna, was on TV telling us that uh, it was a foreign a conspiracy to throw up a you know pandemonium and uh, cause all kinds of uh, havoc in our midst. Excuse me. This broadcast is to address IBM Haruna and the class of 1966. All of those who plunged us into this mess we are in and who culminated all of it into the unitary constitution that took, away, took us away from the federation we ought to have been, we ought to be. And now turning around to talk about we and our in all kinds of uh, uh, things, as if we have a union. You killed our union by toppling the basis of the union itself. And now you come to cry about uh, foreign manipulation. You said that there, it was on account of foreign manipulation that things went wrong in 1966-67 that became war in which children numbering over 2 million got killed. When I say quota general, I say to that class of 66 that all this general, this general, that you became generals because you killed 2 million children in eastern Nigeria. You became generals because you, you, you starved Two million children to death, killing women and all kinds of uh, things, you know. And now you have, you have built your Nigeria on the foundation of the blood of the innocent. And that Nigeria is unraveling. And you come out to, 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 to speak hogwash about what is amiss. Your sovereignty that is now being threatened by people who are telling you what you are doing. If anybody does not understand what has happened, the U.S., by the action in not going to share intelligence with Nigeria, the U.S. was telling Abuja that they know that it is Abuja that is behind the terror that was happening to us. If anybody doesn't understand it, let him understand it now. And as for where things have come to, and the constitutional arrangement, because uh, IBM Haruna referred to that constitution of Nigeria a whole number of times, how we can build our democracy, we want good governance, and all of that. What have you done since after having acknowledged that it is foreign manipulation? Yes, British, the BBC and the British government, you know, uh, found a way to turn what was happening in 1966 into the conflagration it became. That, at least, is being owned up to now. But those who manage that situation into the war it became, into the post-war uh, you know, uh, uh, repairs and reconstruction that should have been, reconciliation that should have been happening that didn't happen, they rather went on to impose a constitution in 1979 that was more or less the victory charter from that war and now continue to construct Nigeria and its stupid democracy on that foundation that is wrong. Now coming out to, it was, it was most pathetic watching the postulations of IBM Haruna. And so, somebody must tell Haruna and the class of 66, and that class of 66 includes all of those who played one part or the other. In that class, we cannot leave out Olusha Gwabasojo. In that class, we cannot leave out Ibrahim Bangida. In that class, we cannot leave out uh, Aslam Abaka. All of those in the 33 years, from that 66 to 99, all of the decrees that happened. Gowon is still alive. You created Kwashoko by starving 
children of my generation. And you've done nothing to even acknowledge that there was genocide against these people. 3.5 million people. You dismiss it and you hope to build on that. You are now wondering why, why, why blood is flowing all over the place. And then the terror networks have come here. You have a commander-in-chief, one of your colleagues in that class of 66. The same Lieutenant Muhammad, the, the, the same Lieutenant Muhammad Buhari that led people house to house, killing people from the east in the, in the northern region of the time. Is now your president and commander-in-chief. He was the spokesman of uh, Boko Haram in all the time they were building up when Jonathan was president. He is the life grand patron of Mieti Allah. Mieti Allah being the proprietors of Fulani Hesmen, the fourth most deadly terror network on earth by Global Terror Index. Boko Haram having occupied the second position, in which case Nigeria is hosting the second most deadly terror group on earth and the fourth most deadly terror group on earth. And our president and commander in chief is directly linked to the two. Otherwise, what was the reason for his nomination as a, as a spokesman for Boko Haram when Jonathan was put under such pressure to uh, uh, be uh, asking for a meeting in Saudi Arabia? Was it not the same body that said an attack on Boko Haram is an attack on the north when Hedrika was struggling to push them back? Has he still since been the patron of, of uh, Mieti Allah? Was it not Buhari that went into the treasury to take a hundred billion to give to a Mieti Allah that was claiming responsible, that was taking responsibility most happily for the atrocities of a, of a, a Fulani Hesman terror network? So in all of that, back to the class of 66 and what they have plunged Nigeria into, our, our, our sovereignty has been compromised fundamentally. We have a president that threw our borders open to say people can come from everywhere, you know, uh, uh, and then we saw the kind of people who have come. Fulani have been brought in from everywhere. And they're causing havoc all over the place. And not nobody's pursuing after them. The armed forces cannot do what they should have been doing because they say that their commander-in-chief is reason they can't do that. Put all of it together. Put the, look at the constitution that has emerged. Imposed in 1979 as victory charter from that war of 67 to 70. And then brought back to life by the decree of another member of that class in 1979, uh, in 1999, Absalom Abaka. And so, the reason, we are, the reason we have to address this now is that the country is heading into a, into a, a stretch worse than what we saw between 64 and 66, that became 67 to 70. The same set of people, the same set of uh, mindset, the same recklessness, the same refusal to listen. We are going to election. Instead of discussing the constitution that has, that the constitutional basis that has collapsed, which Nigeria is uh, IBM Harden are talking about? Which union? Which constitution? You want good governance. You want democracy. You are asking America to let you build up on, on the rotten foundation you have laid. It's a pity that Gowon, who presided over all of that rot, all of that mess, that resulted in the death of this number of people, 3.5 million people, is still alive. He hasn't found the courage to own up to what went wrong. And he's hoping that it will blow away. The blood of the innocent will always avenge itself. That's what is happening to everybody everywhere across Nigeria where blood is flowing. Go and look at where Go and find out what transpired on that, uh, on that you know, uh, uh, transaction of bloodletting. Find out what transpired between 1966 and 1970. Find out what transpired even after 1970 to the time of 1999. Find out how we came about the constitution we have. Find out how we went from four regions to 36 states. Look at this map. Look again at this map and find out who created, who, who fractured us from the four regions of uh, autonom autonomy, re four autonomous regions that had their constitutions, control over their assets, and all of that. Go on must find the courage to own up to what they did wrong that became the basis of what is happening to us now. 
If Brian Bangida is still alive, he has to find the courage to own up to what went wrong. IBM Haruna has, in that interview, I think it's in third of November, somewhere around the 3rd of November, arrived TV, being interviewed by Rufai and uh, uh, Ruben Abati. He did say that it was the manipulation of the foreigners that brought us to the inferno we had to manage. Yes, was the BBC, was Britain, that turned what should have been a, a, you know, a, a, a family a, a fight into, into a war that consumed so many. A war that, that turned this, this giant promise on the African continent uh, into, 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 into the mess it has become. Into the global property capital. Selling 3 million barrels of crude oil every day. Half of which is being stolen by people who are not far from the pinnacle of governance. Otherwise, who is the oil minister? Who does the documentation that NMPC has to do around crude oil movement? Who presides over the Navy in terms of commander-in-chief, for which the Navy can look away that ocean-going tankers will be coming in and going out? Who, who do you think you are addressing? So we have, a union, we have a union disputed. We have a union on that dispute. And we declare that dispute in a manner that could be resolved if there is a bit more honesty in the matter. But no, arrogance and dishonesty is reigning supreme. Yeah, until recently, uh, Jeremiah Useni uh, was still boasting all over the place about how he participated in the killing of Hiroshi. And look at what is happening. David Mack, look at what is happening to your Edoma people. The young people do not know that it was David Mack that presided over the, the seizure of assets of Igbo people in Port Harcourt that they shared out as that they declared and shared out as abandoned property. You put a people, you 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 target a people for elimination. They began to run home. You chased them to that place, bombed them for three years, starved children to death in the place, and then right after that you seize all their assets and you are building your country on such a foundation of atrocity and injustice. The Absalom al Baka and the, the Hassan Kuka that are doing a peace uh, a committee, you, you are building your democracy on a foundation of injustice and you are asking people to come and sign peace accord. What hypocrisy? What hypocrisy? What peace can you find on a foundation of injustice? Who do we live? Who do we call amongst all of them? The same IBM Haruna. Was, was, was the Minister for Communication in the, in the, at, at, the, at the height of the glory of the military enterprise in Nigeria during the military governance era. If we thought Lai Mohammed was uh, doing anything untoward today, go back and see what people like IBM Haruna did in those days, telling, telling all kinds of tales that deceived everybody into where we have landed now. We must go back to the truth. The Nigeria that we agreed to have as one political union died in 1966 when the five constitutions that defined the union got toppled. What has been in place since then have been, you know, the dummy. The carcass was hijacked by the caliphate. And that caliphate has managed to, you know, institutionalize that carcass in the name of Federal Republic of Nigeria, but under a tightly controlled unitary system that has 68 items on the exclusive list that has created states and local government areas in such a manner that they become a permanent political minority, majority, holding the, the sovereignties and the assets of the owners of the land, turning Nigeria upside down to become the global capital for poverty and everything bad. The young people are running in every direction. They say it's Japa. They are running for their dear lives. From what? From people like IBM Haruna and the class of 66 and their depositions and impositions on Nigeria that have become constitution. And then we are talking about in, in, impunity. Section 6, subsection 6D. And I challenge the lawyers in the land, I challenge the media in the Nigeria to find out why a 33-year period of immunity was embedded in the Constitution of Nigeria as Section 6, Subsection 6D. Everything they did between the 15th of January 
and the 29th of May are put beyond the inquiry. Nobody can ask. So whether they killed in thousands or millions or whether they seized the assets of people, the owners of oil block today, how, what is the meaning of oil block? You take it, your people's land. You take it, your people's oil. You take it, your people's waters. And you allot it to yourselves. Look at this map. Look at those who own those oil blocks. Place them on this map and see what we are talking about. That's the Nigeria you want to prosper. That's the Nigeria you want to grow. That's the Nigeria you think can become great. Nothing can be built on such a foundation of injustice. The owners of the land that you call Nigeria, the owners of the sovereignties you confiscated. Yes, the British started the confiscation in 1914. But the discussions we had between 1951 and 1959 that terminated in Lancaster House becoming the independence of 1960, all of that have been washed away because our sovereignty is now in the hand of that caliphate that has seized control of all the economic assets, all the guns in the land, all the powers to do even the list of things. I can't generate electricity for myself. I can't build my roads. I can't conduct election to, to select who will govern me because somebody in Abuja is uh, And we're saying, let us stop. Let us stop this journey to nowhere. Let us stop this journey to damnation. To go and fix the, the, the damaged basis of the Nigerian Federation. They say no. And they are relying on, 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 the, on the immunity they had planted for themselves to come to insult our, co our collective sensibilities on TV. Pointing at America as the one that uh, is stealing uh, uh, the oil and planning all kinds of things. The grievances, the grievances of the constituent components of Nigeria, the grave constitutional grievances that has resulted in agitations, for which reason more than 75% of those you call Nigerians are now eager to take out their sovereignty from, the, from your failed Nigeria. Those were the things Nina's articulated in a manner that could be solved on the 16th of December in 2020. Putting a step-by-step -step proposition on how to proceed. But the arrogance of those who imposed the madness we have has led them into inviting us to election and how they will build a, a, a good governance on top of a constitution that uh, guarantees uh, the kind of all of the atrocities we see, whether it's corruption or, or insecurity or the impunity or the decaying infrastructure, everything we lament now flow from that constitution. Election can only renew the life of that constitution. And somebody will swear, whoever wins, will swear to govern and govern by and defend that constitution. That is what IBM Haruna is telling us we are building upon. Let IBM Haruna and the class of 66 first go and decide who are the we. I can't be part of that we that includes IBM Haruna. What is the hour in it? Do we have a union now under this constitution you imposed? We don't have a union. We have a chance to go to discuss, but time is running out. And those who are dragging us to election in 2023 should remember what happened to the elections of 64, 65. Because that's exactly where, where we're headed again. The constitution that brought us together suffered internal bleeding in 1962, when the constitution of Western region was unilaterally suspended unconstitutionally by the federal government of the time. Recklessness. And instead of fixing that, we decided to beat down the Yoruba that were crying. We decided to slap into the gutter the thief that were shouting for the, for, the, for the alterations that have been brought into the union agreement. At the end of the day, patriotic young officers came to try to rescue the situation. The British joint venture partners with the caliphate turned it into something else. And we have seen the outcome. If we do not go back to that truth and resolve it, the union of Nigeria will go up in smoke. It doesn't matter how, how much, uh, how many times you sing the national anthem or you fly your, your, you wave your flag and ask people to come and believe. Believe in what? The class of 66. The class of 66. The class of 66. You know yourself. It will not take more than one meeting to invite those who are now presiding. Luckily for you, one of you is the president now. It will not take more than one meeting 
to admonish yourself that we should go back and fix this vessel before it sinks. Otherwise, if we insist on just going to election and pretending we have a democracy that is being developed, that could produce good governance and El Dorado, the owners of that sovereignty that have been, that have been rendered you know, uh, uh, slaves in their homelands do not share in that uh, vision of master and servant union that you are building. Union of death, it has become for them. They will do whatever comes within their reach to do to take out their portions and leave whatever remains with whoever wants to remain there. That's where we are. But we are statesmen. We are not anarchists. We have put a framework forward for how to deal with it in an orderly manner. It is for the rest of the, those who are going to suffer, those who are going to die from things snapping, things blowing up, things exploding. Those are the ones we are also inviting, in fact, we are more particularly inviting to put aside all of the noise about election and come to join in saying election will not solve this problem. Let us stop thus far, get into transition, put away the product of that brigandage of 33 years that began in 1966, producing the 1999 outcome with a 1979 as the first major bus stop transported in, into 99 in the name of concession. Let us accept that we have not made any concession. Therefore, we do not have a union, the type that uh, we are being invited to build upon now. We can still do it, but if we remain arrogant and dishonest, of course, those who are being killed, those who are being expropriated, those who are being impo impoverished, those whose future have been mortgaged, are not going to be clapping and cheering. They are going to take steps. IBM Haruna, you've seen nothing. All of those who, who are threatening to go to, 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 to pick up their guns and their uniforms and go back to battlefield, I'm sorry for you because your children and grandchildren are going to have to carry on that fight. Except we solve the problem now. And they're not going to have the kind of uh, advantage you had when people didn't know what was going on. Everybody now knows and everybody's awake now. I think the world should be enough for the wise in this matter. The insult must come to an end. Thank you.